The Motion Picture Association of America's film rating system is used in the United States to rate a film's suitability for certain audiences based on its content. This rating system was introduced on November 1st, 1968. It's been updated and modified throughout the years, but the basis of the ratings has pretty much remained the same from the very beginning. When a film is given the Restricted Rating, or Rated R, persons under the age of 17 years old requires an accompanying parent or adult guardian, since the film is said to contain adult material. Such adult material that brings on that R rating includes harsh language, realistic or extreme violence, and sexually oriented nudity. So what do all of these things have to do with toys? Well, despite R-rated films not being appropriate for children, according to the MPAA, there have been an astounding amount of toy lines based on these films and their characters that were targeted directly at kids. So, let's dive into the world of R-rated movie toys for kids today on Toy Explosion. Terminator. I'm back. Got to find John Connor. Come in, Mahoney. I'm on the case. This clan leader attacks with whipping dreadlocks. But the Flying Queen unmasks him. <laughs> Send in Hicks and the heavily armored evac fighter. Send in the Marines. Blast them. Yeah. And bottle them. And it's pie by bug. Each sold separately. Aliens. These days, it's not uncommon to see collector toys based on a wide variety of R-rated sci-fi or horror films. Toy companies such as McFarlane, Mezco, and NECA Toys have provided many amazing collectible pieces based on films just like this. However, they are specifically targeting the adult collector market. Today, I want to focus my attention on all of the toys that were made for kids that came from a movie that, according to the MPAA, wasn't even made for them. The 1990s saw a pretty big explosion of these types of toy lines, many of which were produced by toy company Kenner. But before we get into any of those, we need to go back just a little bit further. So allow me to turn it over to my friend Jason Duvall from Toy World Order to tell you more. In 1979, director Ridley Scott and 20th Century Fox released a terrifying sci-fi horror film with the tagline, In Space, No One Can Hear You Scream. That film was Alien. With creature designs by famed Swiss artist H.R. Giger, the film proved to be a box office and critical success, eventually going on to win the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. Now, Kenner, already with a working relationship with 20th Century Fox, due to having a hit line at retail based on a little film called Star Wars, was given the license to produce toys based on this horror film. And they released one figure, which today is highly sought after and desired. The 18-inch alien figure is, for the 70s, a toy like none other. The sculpting and detail on the massive figure is amazing for a toy from that era, and the sheer audacity of it makes it that much more amazing. Its lifespan on shelves, however, was extremely short-lived parents were up in arms over the fact that this giant disgusting toy was based on an R-rated film and geared towards children. Some stores pulled them from shelves, others left them alone, and there they sat on shelves collecting dust. Now, the story of their recall, however, isn't entirely true. The fact is that the toy just wasn't a huge seller, and it was relegated to clearance bins across the country. Now, in the end, the failure of the giant 18-inch alien figure halted plans from Kenner for a smaller-scale line that was in the works. And while it was the first R-rated film to have a toy line, it was not the last, not by a long shot. Back to you, Pixel Dan. As you're likely aware, that wasn't the last time Kenner had a go at toys from the Alien franchise. Once the 1990s came along, Kenner decided it was time to bring the Xenomorphs back to the toy aisles and they had much more success this time around. Released in 1992, Kenner's Aliens line of action figures are based on the Alien film franchise, heavily inspired by the sequel from 1986, Aliens. 
Rumor has it that these toys were intended to tie into an animated series called Operation Aliens, but the series was never released. So the line lived on its own, only being tied to the R-rated film that was released six years earlier. However, each action figure did include an exclusive Alien Space Marines mini-comic that were published by Dark Horse, telling stories relating to the characters from the toy line to help create a setting. The line focused on two warring factions, the Human Space Marines and the Alien Xenomorphs. The Marines included characters such as Hicks, the Android Bishop, and the main protagonist from the films, Ellen Ripley. Likely in an attempt to make them more exciting, many of the human marines have more extreme, brightly colored outfits than they did in the films. Bishop in particular is a personal favorite of mine, simply because Kenner decided to make him look even more robotic by adding cool shades and metal plates to his head. I love how they even crudely drew these elements onto an actual photo of actor Lance Henriksen as Bishop on the back of the toy's packaging. Atax is another fun one. The idea here is that he's a brave marine with armor that disguises him as a xenomorph. The head doubles as a rocket firing missile for sneak attacks. The idea of Atax just waltzing in to hang out with the xenomorphs undetected so that he can attempt to blast them is quite humorous to me. But let's talk about the xenomorphs. They are the obvious highlight of this toy line. Instead of making just one or two Xenos that looked identical like in the film, Kenner chose to make a variety of wacky alien designs to make the overall line more collectible and toyetic. The thought process comes from the Xenomorph's ability to inherit physical traits from the host species. This gives us figures like the Gorilla Alien, with a blue-toned body and longer ape-like arms that can grapple the Space Marines. Or the snake alien, with a long bendy body and a xeno head with snapping fangs. And my personal favorite, the mantis alien, with its bright translucent green body design. There are so many great designs here, all of which also include their own fun action features. But one thing to note is that, while they look similar, none of the aliens released in the main series looked like a straight-up xenomorph warrior from the Aliens film. Or even the big chap from the 70s film. The closest we got was the scorpion alien, who looked fantastic, but features an exploding action feature that, while really fun, does tend to pop apart pretty easily, thus making the figure a little hard to both play with and display sometimes. That is, until we got the Aliens vs. Predator 2 pack. This pack gives us a much more movie accurate basic Xenomorph action figure, as well as a Predator that looks similar to what was seen on screen. Which brings us to the next toy line that we're going to discuss. Just a few short years after Kenner launched their Aliens toy line, 1994 saw the release of their Predator toy line. Inspired by the films from 1987 and 1990, the toy doesn't really follow any specific story arc from these films. In fact, unlike with the Aliens line, there are no human characters here. Instead of creating warring factions, Kenner decided to go all in on the Predator vs. Alien concept. The packaging even refers to Predator as the ultimate alien hunter and shows both Predator and alien action figures in the cross-sell artwork on the back. Much like with the aliens, the Predators in this line are mostly new classes and types not seen in the films. Some of the designs were wonderfully wacky, like the translucent red lava planet Predator or the glow-in-the-dark stalker Predator. But even if they look extremely gimmicky at first glance, the amazing artists at Kenner created some fantastic sculpts here, much like with their Aliens line. Just look at the fun details on Stalker. You see that severed xenomorph tail wrapped around his arm? How great is that? Removable masks were typical for the figures in this line, usually with their own unique mask designs. If you were one of those kids who was allowed to watch the original Predator film, you no doubt explained that your figure was one ugly mother every time you removed the mask. 
And also like the Xenomorphs, there are action features aplenty. The clan leader has whipping dreadlocks at the touch of a button. And the awesome laser shot predator even has lights and sounds on his cannon. But the majority of the action features are in the form of rocket firing missiles. After all, they do need to be able to blast down those aliens. Before Kenner went all in on Aliens vs. Predator, they took a stab at producing toys for another R-rated film franchise. Terminator 2 action figures were released in 1991, the same year as the hit film. This line mostly focused on giving us numerous variations of the Arnold Schwarzenegger T-800 and the film's villain, the T-1000, with a few generic T-800 endoskeletons thrown in as well. We eventually got a John Connor action figure to hang out with Arnie, but never did get a Sarah Connor, which is quite a disappointment considering she is so important to the story of the films. If I had to guess, I'd say this decision was made based on that old adage of boys not wanting to buy female action figures. I'm glad Kenner changed directions when it was time to release Ripley in the Aliens line. The figures that were released were quite fun though. Kenner worked their magic to make these humanoid characters fun by adding in some fun action features. The Battle Damage Terminator has a projectile faceplate that blasts off, revealing the T-800 endoskeleton underneath. Exploding T-1000 has the same blow-up action feature that Kenner later reused for their Scorpion Alien, and also has a pretty fantastic half-chrome paint deco. And then there's the Motorcycle Cop Disguise Blaster T-1000, whose butt turns into a rocket-firing missile launcher. Yep, his butt. And the iconic T-800 endoskeletons really do make for some great-looking action figures. While there are some really weird Kenner-created accessories with this one, what exactly is that? The figure itself does look great with red eyes that glow under light, cool twisting innards of the arms when they're posed, and even a waist-twisting Techno Punch action feature. The mold was even reused for the now fan-favorite Endo Glow Terminator. Everyone loves glow-in-the-dark toys, right? Now here's a line you probably didn't think about being from an R-rated film. Now to be fair, there was a Police Academy animated series, which is actually what these toys are based on. But this whole franchise began with the R-rated Police Academy films, which are definitely not kid-friendly. Based on that animated series, the toys themselves are very cartoony. Even the action features really play up the cartoonness of them all. Mahoney spins his pistol when you squeeze his legs together. Zed rides on his police skateboard, complete with sirens, and loses his pants by pressing a button on his back. House launches a giant hoagie from his blaster. They are wacky to the max, and honestly, that makes them incredibly fun. But if you're going to play cops and robbers with your action figures, you need some fun bad guys to chase down too. Numbskull has a simple headbutting action feature with swappable drill and hammer helmets. Mr. Sleaze may look like an ordinary dude just out for a stroll with his dog, but squeezing his legs causes him to throw his hands up in the air, revealing the disguise for his little foo-foo dog and a small gun hidden under his tie. And then there's Kingpin, with his thief trap safe filled with money. I think this line might be easily overlooked, possibly passed by because of its cartoony nature. But that wacky animated inspiration is exactly what makes this line so much fun. There's a pretty wide variety of fun character designs, a sweet police station playset, and even some hard to find items like that mail away Captain Harris action figure. If you've never really given this toy line a chance before, now's a good time to give it a look. It's quite fun. The toys we took a look at here today are only but a portion of the toy lines that were aimed at children that were based on ideas and characters from R-rated films. 
I have always found this topic fascinating. As a kid, I often found myself attempting to convince my parents to buy many of these toys for me, but since they were from films that I couldn't watch at the time, they usually wouldn't. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only kid who was in that position, but come on! Regardless of the subject matter, these were cool toys. While Kenner made all of the offerings that we showed in today's video, they were not alone in the production of kids' toys that were based on content that could be considered non-kid friendly. So we'll definitely be revisiting this topic sometime in the future. Thank you guys so much for joining me for another episode of Toy Explosion. I want to give a very special thanks to my good friend Jason Duvall over at Toy World Order for helping me out with this episode, as well as a shout out for Dave Draper, also over at Toy World Order, who allowed me to film his original 70s alien figure from Kenner. Such a cool, cool piece to get for this particular video. And of course, I have to give a very special thanks to everybody who supported this show on Patreon. Toy Explosion is a Patreon supported show. So all the lovely names you see on the screen right now help make this show possible. If you guys want to get in on the action and help be a part of this, help me come up with some ideas for episodes, you can check it out for yourself on my Patreon page, which I will link in the video description. Until next time, my friends.